The United States Navy operates around the world, ready at all times to defend our country with combat-ready naval forces. Assault craft units, or ACUs, are vital components to fulfilling that mission, using landing craft to deliver Marines, equipment, and supplies from ship to shore and back. Our mission is to offload any Marine or equipment that needs to be offloaded from the ships that are deployed onto any beach or soil. Training is key in a small unit. We need to be out in the times when it's cold, it's wet, and it's miserable because that's what usually we face when we do deploy. The ACUs may be challenged with landing personnel under enemy fire, delivering heavy equipment and changing seas, or providing life-saving humanitarian relief. Such tasks are only possible with extensive training. But the Chesapeake Bay and nearshore Atlantic waters and beaches the team needs to train are also seasonal home for sea turtles, including loggerheads, greens, and Kemp's Ridleys. It's a heavy use area for the Navy, and it's also really important developmental habitat for some of these sea turtle species. In order to reduce any potential impacts on the turtles, the Navy has mitigation strategies in place that all teams are required to employ during training. Before we even get kicked out of the ship, we'll have the brief knowing that this is an operating area where we need to be vigilant. These measures include maintaining lookouts trained to spot sea turtles and marine mammals. We'll always have a lookout out there with us. That way we can alter course and slow down and move and make sure that we don't come in contact with it. Although turtles nesting on a beach used for training are uncommon in this area, the beach is regularly monitored for any signs of nesting activity, and any nests that are identified are marked and avoided. We'll have a beach party team, and they'll let us know if anything's marked and make sure that we stay clear of it. Making sure these efforts are effective and finding ways to improve mitigation requires ongoing commitment to research in order to build a better understanding of when sea turtles may be in the area and how they're using the shared environment. It's been a really important priority over the last couple of years to track them in multiple ways and multiple species to see where they're going, how long they're staying, and then the Navy can use that as a tool to develop potential mitigation measures or to even just assess how big its impact might be in general. Collecting data on sea turtles is often achieved through satellite tagging. But the Navy has also deployed a broad network of acoustic receivers in the area for monitoring Atlantic sturgeon. The Navy had already invested the capital in the array under the sturgeon project. So really for the turtles, all we had to do was ramp up you know, purchasing some tags that we can put on them and find a partner in the area that we could work with. Virginia Aquarium was keen and they were excited about the project as well, so it was a perfect way to leverage not just the array, but the existing partnership. It was a chance to use this array for more than one species, and the Navy also wanted to use some satellite tracking as well, which we had a permit to do. The aquarium rescues and rehabilitates a large number of turtles every year. They face a fair number of threats in our area. Uh, boat strikes are pretty common, entanglement in fisheries are fairly common, uh, and then we also do see some disease and cold stunning is another possibility. Many of these turtles are returned to full health and can be tagged and tracked when they're released into the wild. The Aquarium's Rehabilitation Center is a particularly important source for some of the smaller turtles, like the Kemp's Ridleys, that are accidentally caught by recreational fishermen. So being able to have access to the rehabilitated Kemp's that come in from the piers is really advantageous to us because this is a species that is harder to catch, harder to track, and there just haven't been as many tags put out on them historically. Because rehabilitated turtles may behave differently after release, the aquarium goes out to capture wild turtles in the early spring when the water is cooler. It's a 75 yards, one o'clock. And these cold-blooded turtles are slower to swim away. As the summer progresses and it warms up, it's a little bit harder to catch these animals. <laughs> Yay, we caught the elusive shirt. Actually, it's a lot harder to catch these animals. Whether wild caught or rehabilitated, all turtles get a complete medical workup before being tagged and released to the wild. A notch to notch is 36.4. We take blood, we measure the animal, we do a good exam on the animal. Then we tag it and let it go. Smaller turtles are only fitted with a single tag, but larger turtles are able to easily carry both satellite and acoustic tags. The tag has an ID that's unique, so the data can be identified with each individual turtle. 
The satellite tags provide location data whenever and wherever the animal surfaces. The acoustic receivers are able to record a turtle's presence when the animal is submerged and beyond the reach of satellites. By combining and analyzing the data from both these sources, researchers are able to develop a much better understanding of the turtle's home range and residency in the Chesapeake and nearshore Atlantic. But even more importantly, they indicate how they're using particular areas. The red area indicates locations where more turtles are foraging. So you can see on the map that's May, August, they're even further up into the bay. And September, the water begins to cool down. They start moving out of the bay. And in November, almost all of the turtles have moved south. The foraging hotspots switch to off of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. We're really trying to look at detailed movements and, and habitat use of turtles around Navy facilities and in Navy training areas. Is this area important to the animals because a lot of them are coming here and it's high quality foraging habitat and, and something we should maybe consider avoiding? Or is it a place that they're just passing quickly through on their way to foraging sites and maybe only spending a few weeks a year there as they pass through? It's projects like this that allow the Navy to answer these questions and continue improving their environmental protection and mitigation efforts. From the very beginning, even as young sailors, we're always being told you got to watch out for the sea mammals and turtles so that we can avoid them. Right in front of you, buddy. Go for it. I really believe the Navy is being a true steward of the environment by wanting to know when these turtles are in areas and when they might impact them and then be able to mitigate those potential impacts. It's a great project because it hits multiple goals and, and really fits in well with the other suite of projects we're funding. It's really a project that makes the Navy's monitoring program stronger overall.